Okay, everyone, thanks for your patience. We're going to go ahead and get started. Coach Drew will start with an opening statement, and then I will prompt media members who've requested questions uh, to ask their question. Coach Drew? First and foremost, hopefully, hopefully everyone and their families are doing well and are safe. Um, I know with us it's been a whirlwind. Uh, if you go back to the Big 12 uh, tournament, uh, you're getting ready to prepare uh, to play your first game. You're practicing, and then you find out uh, uh, fans aren't going to be allowed. And uh, you, you're like, OK, we've, we've handled that with uh, scrimmages before. We practice all the time with empty gyms. That's, uh, we're going to be able to uh, 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 adapt to that. And then next thing you know, uh, uh, the conferences all canceled their tournaments. And then uh, um, followed by the NCA canceling. So uh, I woke up the next morning after we got home, and I said, was that a dream? Uh, so uh, obviously uh, uh, something completely different than any of us have ever uh, uh, faced before. And uh, I think uh, one thing that's, that's fitting is once the season ends, uh, as, a, as a team, usually in the locker room, you have uh, an opportunity to thank the seniors for their contributions and what they've done and thank everybody for the year. And, uh, when we gathered the team to kind of go over that after we knew the NCAA had uh, canceled the tournament, uh, uh, very fitting. One of our seniors, Obim, right away said, uh, hey, this is a, a blessed season. Let's make this happy. Uh, look at all the things we've accomplished, 23-game win streak, uh, being ranked uh, longer number one than anyone since uh, Kentucky in 2015, 15 conference wins, on and on and on. And right away the mood just in, uh, uh, changed and everything was uh, uh, very positive. And again, coaching this group, uh, I think that kind of summarizes the whole season from the standpoint. It's a group that really got along well. It's a group that uh, really uh, loved one another, spent a, a ton of time uh, with each other, and uh, we're always positive. And uh, that led to us having a, a historical year. Um, and I think as we all have learned in recent uh, uh, days just how uh, uh, severe the situation is, and uh, we all want to do our part to make sure that uh, uh, we can uh, save as many lives and uh, uh, help the country in any way that uh, uh, we all can by following instructions. All right, our first question comes from John Warner from the Waco Tribune Herald. John? John? Yeah, hey, Scott. Uh, you, you know, with the NCAA shutting down the tournament, uh, what are you and your staff doing moving forward? Uh, do you have to have meetings by phone or Skype? And as far as recruiting, what, what can you all do right now? Great question. First of all, we're, we're monitoring where you're hiking. Uh, I think you were last spotted in Cameron Park. But uh, uh, <laughs> as far as as far as uh, uh, the staff goes, we're actually getting ready to meet here shortly. And uh, uh, it's business as usual with uh, phone calls to recruits. The NCA has uh, uh, done a great job in putting in uh, a dead period, which means no recruits can come to campus, and we can't go see recruits until April 15th, which was uh, a tremendous thing by them. So nobody's put in harm's way, and we all can uh, help with the situation. So. Uh, Right now, everything will be done via the phone. And then uh, the immediate and most important need is uh, making sure our players are taken care of. We have uh, several that are still here on campus. And now we're shifting uh, and trying to get, uh, make sure they have all uh, the resources they need and help they need with their online courses and uh, how they're going to be able to, to finish out the semester. And then also uh, um, with restaurants closing and, and different facilities closing, where they can go to eat and what they need to do uh, just for their day to day uh, life. So uh, right now, a lot of things uh, it, it transpired in a short period of time. And uh, the great thing about uh, America is we're resilient. And we uh, do a great job in always working together to fix and help uh, the situation in, uh, as quick as possible. The next question is from Stephen Hawkins from the Associated Press. Stephen? Stephen? Tyler, I want to ask you first real quick. When you mentioned the season, uh, would you be willing to share who it was? It sounds like something Freddie would say, but also Devontae, maybe. Can you repeat that question? Because I, I couldn't hear. I, 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 when you started a minute ago, you said when y'all first met. I, I'm just kind of curious. You said it was a senior. I'm just wondering if you were willing to share who that senior was that, that yeah, said that. 
It was yeah, it, o, o, it uh, Obim, uh, and anyone that knows O, he's always smiling. He's always happy-go-lucky. He's always uh, making the mood uh, light and uh, uh, does a great job bringing energy in practice. And um, obviously, uh, uh, right now, I know one thing the NCA is talking about is uh, uh, do you grant uh, uh, a fifth year, uh, an extra year for everybody? And uh, I know that'll be a, a tough decision. They'll have to weigh a lot of different things uh, into that equation. But I know, I know our our team. Uh, if if uh, they wanted to make sure I I passed along to the NCA, if they wanted to pay, play the tournament in August, July, anytime, anywhere. Where they're more than willing to be there. So um, uh, I know we have a special group of guys. Next question is from Jerry Hill, Barely Bear Insider. Jerry? Jerry? Scott, um, I know you probably haven't had a chance to even think about this team this season, but when you have a chance to look back, what do you, what do you think your thoughts will be about how special this year was? Well, I think uh, uh, historical uh, always sums up uh, a season when you're when you're able to s set as many records and accomplish as many things. Uh, for for the Baylor family, I, I know we were all looking forward to seeing uh, Baylor with a number one seed, and uh, that was something we had worked extremely hard to uh, have an opportunity to achieve. Uh, I, like I said, with the 23 game win streak. Uh, I, I don't know if that 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 that'll be broken because with the parity in college basketball, you see how long it took to break uh, the 22 game win streak, and uh, I could see that stand in for quite some time. Uh, just with the, uh, the parity in college basketball and a, another great accomplishment by uh, this group, and uh, I know all all year there wasn't a dominant per se team, but yet we were ranked number one longer than anyone in the last, what, five years since 2015. So uh, that just speaks to the consistency. It speaks to the everyday uh, blue collar type attitude where these guys showed up and competed and played. And even in games where we lost, um, they played extremely hard and, and uh, 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 they never they never didn't show up or never uh came and and you you'd walk away like man we just didn't uh, we didn't play today i mean uh, the guys love one another and they love to compete and they love to play uh and i thought they brought out the best in each other all year long next question is from kirk bowles from the austin american statesman statesman uh, scott have you gotten any direction from the nca on that whole eligibility issue and how do you think that would work with the 13 scholarship limitation and incoming recruits. I know you guys have, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. three people coming in. Excellent question. So uh, that would, I mean, the NCA would have to analyze all that, and you're 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 obviously going to have to make exceptions and do things that you haven't done before because this is a different situation. So, uh, I mean, one thing would be 15 scholarships. One thing would be uh, as many of the seniors that would want to come back. Uh, but again, I know the NCA. There's always two sides to every argument, and with the spring sports, I know everybody uh, was kind in agreement because most of those seasons hadn't started or just barely had started, where the winter sports, a lot of teams uh, either had finished or, or completed their season or at least a majority of it. So, uh, again, I know, the, I know uh, my opinion, uh, uh, it doesn't matter right now. It'll be the NCAs, uh, um, and they'll do a good job in analyzing all of it and deciding what's best for uh, the student athletes and the colleges. And uh, I know right now uh, they got so much on their plate, and I think uh, uh, they've done a great job in moving recruiting back and making sure that uh, uh, we're adhering to the national guidelines and keeping all uh, each other safe. Next question comes from Matt Roberts with KWKT TV in Waco. Hey, Scott, you talked about uh, after the West Virginia game how unfortunate it was that y'all won 15 games and get a chance to compete for a Big 12 title, and then you get ready to go in the conference tournament, and, and then everything just kind of starts to unravel from there. Have you, you know, you talked about Obim getting up and, and kind of inspiring everyone, but did you give yourself any kind of 24 hour rule to kind of reflect and, and maybe be a little bit disappointed at all? <laughs> Well, I uh, I know when the one shining moment video came out, uh, uh, that 
when my wife started crying, <laughs> I think the reality hit me. You know, season is over, but uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we've been we've been so busy in trying to make sure everybody's taken care of and making sure everyone has what they need. Um, as far as are they back home? Do they have their books? Do they know what they need to do um, and whatnot? That that really, uh, uh, even though um, work has come to a halt as far as what you can do uh, off campus, uh, making sure and, and taking care of our, our, our current student athletes is by far and away our biggest priority. So with us, uh, uh, one thing I, I know the Big 12 tournament, our, our guys at least got to that night, they got to see the game, they got to see the atmosphere for those that hadn't had a chance to see it. And uh, I know there were fans there that night, and it was uh, an opportunity for them to say, uh, uh, man, this is this is really cool for those that hadn't seen it because the Big 12 uh, uh, arguably runs the best conference championship in the country, and it's so supported. And uh, I, I I'll, n I'll never forget when the NBA announcement came across Twitter because, uh, as you know, everybody always has their phones with them, and everybody turned around because they were sitting in front of us, and uh, that began uh, uh, an instant conversation because uh, when the NBA uh, uh, postpones their season, you know things are serious, and uh, I know uh, uh, America does a great job in adjusting, and America always does a great job in pulling together. And it's uh, uh, great what we're accomplishing right now to try to save lives. Next question is from Nick Canizales from KCN TV in Waco. Hey, Coach, what's going on? Hey, I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on, uh, have you spoken to your seniors since Thursday and to get their thoughts, especially of now that they've had some time to, to process everything going on, and, and would they come back uh, mm -hmm. for another year if they could? Well, I think with the with our seniors right now, first is uh, making sure academically um, they're staying caught up and on top of things. Uh, the second thing would be we're pursuing uh, um, the next step with them would be selecting an agent and getting ready for uh, uh, whenever the NBA would allow workouts or whenever the NBA uh, has a draft process that they're ready to, to go through that. And then the third thing, just not making any final decisions until we have word what's going to happen with the, the fifth year or the NBA process. So probably uh, we're, we're two weeks out in a holding pattern to just see what all transpires. And I know the NCA and the, the NBA will be working together just to figure out what, what, what are the, the drop dead dates and what can and can't people do. So right now uh, it's, it's, it's sit tight uh, as far as making any final decisions. We've got four more questions in the queue. A reminder, if you'd like to add uh, a question, please send a text to David Kay. The next question comes from Mac Engel from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Hey, Scott. Um, for you personally, have you been able to make peace with all this? Because you've been there for a long time, and it would seem that this was your best team and maybe your best chance to, to finally get to the Final Four, and that opportunity was taken away from you. Have you sort of made peace with all that yet, or is this still a very fresh wound? Well, 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 one thing that uh, uh, I'm one of those, the glass is half full guys. And um, I guess I get that from my dad. And right away, uh, once once the news came out, we weren't going to have the NCAA tournament. And after we talked with the team, uh, to be honest, my my whole mindset has shifted to taking care of our guys and making sure they're able to uh, um, finish out the semester, make sure that their needs are taken care of, um, where they know they can go to get food for those that are still on campus and uh, what they know they can do study study table wise and and whatnot so I right away I've shifted to that and then I think the other thing is uh without basketball to watch I've seen more on the news and read more articles on the coronavirus and uh right away uh, I, I think what I love about sports is um uh, I always say if we go to war I'd love to be in foxholes with coaches and athletes because it's all about overcoming adversity it's always about making the situation better and right now now that's that's truly my goal is what can we do to get past this and save lives and how can we bring awareness because it, the sooner we're all on the same team the sooner we're all adhering to the uh, the guidelines and rules that uh, uh, the government has put down for what's best for for America the, the sooner we can get past this and get back to uh, uh, business as usual so um, that's one thing again I love about uh, uh, coaches and uh, myself included in that mix is uh, whatever we can do to help with that and spread this 
this message uh, and the severity of it so that we can get past it uh, and save lives, that's, that's important. Next question is from Suzanne Halliburton from the Austin American Statesman. Hey, Scott, speaking of business as usual, once this passes, and we all pray that it does, have you talked to Mac Rhodes about whether this situation with the financial situation going on across the country and a recession predicted that maybe it could hinder you all um, raising money and building the new arena that you all announced last May? Actually, uh, um, right now, one thing good about myself probably is I'm pretty tunnel vision. And what I mean by that, it's what's the order, uh, what, what right now can we, can we do to help uh, the situation? And so, to be honest, that's that's the furthest thing from my mind right now. I just want to make sure that uh, we're taking care of our student athletes and we're bringing awareness so that we can get past this uh, uh, as quick as possible. And then at that point, I think we'll all have a better idea of just how uh, damaging it has been. And then uh, from there, again, the next step is how can we make it better and uh, what can we do to make it better. And uh, 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 I hope uh, I never change from that, meaning um, whatever we can do to help help uh, uh, bring joy to people and uh, bring awareness and help comfort people. And uh, I, I, I love when they when they show on TV just different ideas, different things people are doing to help people during this time. And uh, that inspires me. And, and right now that would be my focus. And then then when this passes, find out about uh, uh, the arena and everything like that. Next question is from Ron Wallace from Ballin' Down South. Hey, how you doing, Coach? Uh, just want to congratulate you on the season you guys did had. Uh, Found AP got you guys at number four. I want to ask you about one of your players, Macy Oteague. I had had the chance to meet him when he was at UNC Asheville because my son plays for Charleston Southern, and they played against each other in the Big South Tournament. But what has he meant for your program to bring him in from a mid-major and bring him up to a high Division One uh, school at Baylor? Well, thanks for thanks for uh, uh, asking about Maceo. Maceo's one of those guys that uh, uh, has great energy, high character. Uh, I love it because he, he, you can have basketball discussions with him. You can discuss uh, 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 life with him, and uh, very old soul, very mature for for his age, and somebody that really, really enjoys working on his craft. Uh, um, Maceo, uh, uh, when the gym is uh, right now, all the facilities are closed, and uh, we have a lot of guys that don't know what to do from the standpoint they spend so much time in the gym and Maceo and Davion uh, I, I joked but it was it was half serious in their transfer redshirt year if you wanted to send a mail you should have sent it to the practice gym because that's where they were at the whole time and uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, the character and work ethic and the camaraderie and love our team had was because of Maceo's addition and just what he brought uh, to our team. And uh, uh, huge, huge contribution, not only on the court, but off the court. Next question is from Jack Allen from KXXV TV in Waco. Hey, Coach, you've talked a lot about how you're focused on what's next day at a time, but is there anything you can take from – this past season that makes you really excited about the team going forward into next year? Oh, mo most definitely. From the standpoint, uh, you, you see what we were able to achieve, and uh, it's kind of like uh, anything you do in, in sports. If you if you lift 225, the goal is now 230. If you run a mile in six minutes, uh, maybe in my case eight or nine, the goal is always seven or eight. It's always less. And, and, and as far as lower your times or improve your weight, and for us in basketball, it's it's do more. So um, we've, we had a historic year this year. What more can we do? next year and uh, what 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 other record books or what other history can this group make and uh, hopefully this group uh, all returns with the same hunger and desire and love for each other and now we have a chance to finish what what we started from the standpoint uh, hopefully you have a big 12 tournament hopefully you have an NCA tournament and then with that uh, I mean uh, the NCA tournament March Madness is such a memorable time and uh, that's something where where players uh, often leave their mark on a university or college basketball and uh, our guys having a chance to achieve that uh, that would be something that that uh, I'd love for them to see. Next question is from Stephen Hawkins from the Associated Press. Scott, you've talked about one of your key things, obviously, is taking care of the players, making sure they have what they need. And then, then obviously, you talk about the guys that were gym rats. 
kind of a two-part question. Can you give me an idea of how many of your guys have remained in the Waco area and, and they're still within reason, within distance of where you guys are? And for those guys that are, that are gym rats, are they banned from coming in or can they come and have a little bit of normality and shoot some baskets and such? So, so uh, uh, about half are here and half are uh, away from campus at home. Uh, with, the, with the campus, um, we have uh, uh, closed the facility. So uh, like most uh, conferences and most schools, uh, the weight rooms, the practice gym, the arenas are all closed to our guys. So, uh, and that just uh, uh, went into effect as far as like uh, um, uh, our student rec center was open yesterday and now it's closed today. So. Again, a lot of moving parts and a lot of a lot of uh, every day adjusting on the fly because when our facility was closed, the the players obviously went to this uh, uh, the slick uh, our rec center, and now that that's closed, uh, I think there's some outdoor courts and <laughs> and you might see uh, 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 low numbers of uh, we wouldn't want a crowd there, but if there's a if there's one or two guys getting shots up, that's that's probably what you'll see in Waco. Next question is from Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Scott, uh, obviously with the three you signed in November and then the three guys sitting out this past year, what are you expecting from those guys? And particularly since you've had a chance to see the, the three guys at Redshirt, what, what specifically can they bring to the table this next year? Well, uh, their contribution already has been uh, uh, felt with our team from the standpoint every day in practice. They help prepare us and get us ready uh, for the for this season, very similar to what Davion and Maceo did the year before. So uh, Adam Flagler is somebody that, uh, uh, similar to the guards that we have, can uh, score it uh, on all three levels and uh, can defend, uh, also can facilitate, and uh, somebody that uh, is, is a high-character person and a great worker work ethic. Um, uh, John, uh, we call him Everyday John because he's always the same. He brings great energy, intensity, usually he's good for one highlight dunk or highlight block every day. And and somebody that uh, 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 truly remarkable how consistently he's able to spend time in the gym. Uh, one of the one of the bigger gym rats I've I've ever had an opportunity to work with thus far. So we've had a lot that are that are real gym rats. So that tells you a little bit about his work ethic, and it's somebody with a forty inch vertical and six uh, percent. Uh, 7% body fat, uh, somebody that uh, uh, brings some physicality and athleticism to the game. And Jordan Turner, somebody that the uh, biggest thing he needed to do was put on some weight and strength because he was he was skilled and he's improving his skill, but he's gotten bigger and stronger and used to uh, competing and playing uh, uh, against uh, more physical older guys. And again, he, he, he probably had it the toughest being our only freshman this year on the team. And uh, the guys loved him, really took care of him. He was a little brother and uh, really looking forward for those guys to have an opportunity next year to compete and help us on the court. Next question is from Chuck Carlton from the Dallas Morning News. Hi, Scott. Thanks for doing this. Well, um, thank you. I was, I was hoping you were doing okay, Chuck. I hadn't heard from you in a minute. <laughs> Hanging in there. But I uh, wanted to ask you, you referenced the, the One Shining Moment video that you guys have put together. Uh, I guess just a two-part question on that. You were one of the first to do that. What prompted you? What was the thought process? And two, you mentioned your wife getting a little emotional. Did you have any feelings watching that? Or, or you know, what, what, what were your thoughts as you're sitting down, whether it's on a, you know, TV screen or cell phone or whatever, yeah. just going through all that and, and what might have been? Well, I, um, I think uh, first and foremost, uh, David Kay and uh, his his group deserve uh, the credit for putting the one shining moment together, and, and I believe a number of schools have, have done that as well, and I think that's a great tribute uh, for the student athletes in the seasons that they've had, and uh, I, I thought the uh, again, that's it originated with him, and uh, really appreciate that. As far as watching it for the first time, uh, uh, I know my wife got emotional. I was more uh, uh, just feeling proud, and you're watching it, and it's like, wow, we we had a great season. These guys really accomplished a lot of stuff, and uh, it was it was really enjoyable. Uh, every day, it wasn't. Uh, some seasons are a little more grind than others, and uh, th this season, it seemed like uh, every day it was fun going to work. Uh, 
no matter win or lose, the guys were always in the gym. They were always energetic. They were always fun to coach. And you don't find that uh, a lot of days, uh, uh, a lot of times in nowadays society because a lot of times student athletes can get wrapped up with, well, how am I playing, my minutes, my shots, my this, my that. And, and you know, you're going to have good games and bad games. So that attitude becomes contagious. And uh, we really didn't have that. We had more a team that uh, uh, was about each other and picked each other up and uh, kept each other in check and uh, made practice fun every day to go to. And uh, I mean, I, I, that's probably uh, uh, the toughest thing is uh, when you come into the office now and the practice gym is, is closed and the weight room, I, I, like you're in shock because you're always used to seeing people around. And um, that's a completely different feeling. Uh, as far as I, I watched the video three times and each time I saw something uh, I'd missed the first time before. And I was like, man, that was, that was really neat. And they really captured a, a lot of the season and did a great job with it. Next question is from John Warner from the Waco Tribune Herald. Scott, uh, has to be a happy day for the the family as far as uh, Bryce getting the uh, Grand Canyon job. job. What, what's uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, very excited for him. Uh, I know uh, he he missed coaching this year. He did a great job on TV. I thought. Uh, uh, that could be a great career for him as well, but uh, he wants to coach. It's in his blood, and uh, uh, but he he didn't want to go to any opportunity. He wanted to go to the right one, and he's really excited about uh, Grand Canyon. For uh, a lot of coaches out there that have played down there, they think it's one of the toughest atmospheres. Uh, one coach I really respect, who had been in the Big Twelve a number of years, said it was the toughest place he's played outside of Allen Fieldhouse. So uh, their their fans get there, they tailgate for three hours before games, and the student section's amazing down there. So he's really excited about that. And plus, uh, 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 it's hard to beat Phoenix weather. And uh, right now, uh, we all know that uh, 80 or 85 degrees is, 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 is good with uh, killing the virus. So Phoenix is a good place to be. All right, we've got a couple more questions in the queue. If you'd like to ask one, please send a text to David Kay, and we'll add you to the line. The next one is from Kirk Bowles with the Austin American Statesman. Hey, Scott, have you specifically talked to uh, uh, Freddie Gillespie and, and Bandu, and have they said they definitely want to come back or they're going to move on? No, I, they have not given any definite answer, nor did I ask them for a definite answer from the standpoint. Uh, right now, the only thing I talked to them about was – before we make a final decision, let's just wait and see what transpires with the NBA and as far as their draft process, draft dates, and what happens with the, the fifth year uh, if they allow people to come back for a fifth year. So I did not ask them for what would they like to do because until we know it's an option to come back, we need to keep pursuing uh, what they would be doing next year. And at the same time, just not finalizing anything until we know uh, that, that that is their only option. Thanks for clarifying. Next question is from Stephen Hawkins from the Associated Press. Scott, as we've talked about on this call, you know, everything's obviously abnormal for everyone right now. And, and, and for you and, and for, for the situation that's going on, we all know that it's changed our lives. For you as a basketball coach, though, knowing what you were about to get prepared for and knowing what you hoped this month of March would be, where, do, where is your head right now, now that it's kind of where you're settled and that's your player settled and all that, kind of where's your head and where do you think it's going to be the next week or so when you knew what else, or we, we thought you, what else you were going to be doing instead of what you're doing now? Well, well, my wife keeps telling me, you know, right now we would be getting ready to go to our tournament site, or right now we would be watching, and <laughs> so she's the one that keeps bringing it up to me, but uh, uh, I, honestly, it, it's more... I think coaches are really good at keeping busy with with what they can do to help in whatever situation or uh, with with working on the future as far as uh, uh, scheduling, recruiting, uh, whatnot. So really just keeping busy uh, uh, and trying to avoid the honeydew list. Um, that's what we're trying to do right now, probably most coaches would tell you. <laughs> all right, that's all the questions we have. Really appreciate everyone joining us. Uh, appreciate your flexibility. Hope you stay safe. Thank you very much.